I have a question for you all, uh, and I want you to, to verbally answer me. How many people here, how many of you React Native developers, love React Native upgrades? Raise your hand. Hey, we have some. We have a few. We have a few. This is amazing. I love it. So, uh, now that we've identified all the Expo users in the audience, <laughs> I'm going to speak to the rest of you. <laughs> uh, so, my talk today, uh, well, okay, let's, let's talk a little bit. This has been a thing for a while, right? Like, this is, look at the date on that, 2018. Uh, this was actually an issue. That, uh, that the React Native core team posted saying, you know, what sucks about React Native? And the top voted thing, which you can note, I voted for all three of those, was upgrading requires a lot, too much effort. Uh, and, and this has been an ongoing thing. There have been various ways that, that we've tried to address this over the years, but today, I am going to, on stage, with flaky internet, <laughs> upgrade a React Native app with a new AI-powered CLI tool that I'm going to introduce to you all called Flame AI. And I'm really excited to show this to you. But first, let's talk a little bit about kind of what leads you to upgrade your React Native app. So you have a beautiful app. You've been working on this for a long time. You've been spending your time really polishing those animations. You've got reanimated in there, of course. Uh, you have uh, a beautiful list uh, using maybe flash list. Uh, your performance is fantastic. Uh, you, you really are feeling really good about this. By the way, that's a screenshot from the default template that comes with Ignite, which is our Infinite Red's uh, boilerplate. That's what we use to start new React Native projects. And, but then you look on Twitter. And you know, there's a new release out. There's a new React Native release out. And you're like, OK, wait. Uh, I don't know. Should I skip this one? Should I wait it out? You know, should I, I should probably upgrade. And you know what's coming. You know what's coming. This is going to be, there's going to be a little bit of uh, pain happening here. And uh, when, you, when you go there, you, you, you bring all your tools to the, to the rescue here. You try to do everything you can, but no matter what you do, React Native upgrades always seem to get the upper hand. It's, it's going to be some pain. You're going to be spending some time. So I have been working on a way to, to hopefully, uh, hopefully ease that pain a little bit more. In the past, there have been uh, some attempts to solve this through tooling. Uh, one of them is React Native Git Upgrade, uh, otherwise known as React Native Upgrade. And what it would do is it would go out to a, a, uh, a website or a, 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 there, there's, there's, a, there's a tool called React Native Diff Purge. Uh, you've probably heard of it. And what it does is it creates a React Native app in the previous version, just a bare React Native app, and it creates one in the latest version. It does a diff, a Git diff between the two, and then it lists out all of the changes that have happened between the template for the previous version and for the new version. This sort of encapsulates all the updates, all the changes that have happened over the course of those two, uh, those two upgrades. And you can actually do this between you know, pretty far, far back releases and the, the, the latest release. So what's the problem? Has anybody used this tool? I actually want to raise your hand if you've used React Native Upgrade in the past. OK, there are a few of you. But there's a reason why everybody doesn't just immediately reach for React Native Upgrade. That's because often Git apply, when it uses Git apply to apply these diffs, it doesn't work. You've modified your files. You've gone into your, your main activity.java. You've gone into your app delegate.mm. You've made little tweaks. You've added various things. You've made changes. And so what happens is it's not a bare React Native app that it's upgrading, right? It's your app. It's your beautiful app that you've been working on, and you've been adding all of these changes into. And so it would just fail. It would just it would fail to apply, and then it would say, please fall back to the manual way of upgrading. Thanks a lot. And uh, so Michael, he, he, he actually wrote this. I, I saw this a couple weeks ago uh, that uh, he he was actually saying that this, this command has been heavily unreliable. And in his opinion, which I'm going to lean on here, it fails like 90% of the time. So 
That's why we decided to disable it and point to upgrade helper directly. So they're actually removing this tool. React Native Upgrade will not be in the CLI. So what is the upgrade helper? Raise your hand if you've used this tool. Yeah, that's pretty much everybody. Like, everybody knows what this tool is. So, React Native Upgrade Helper, just in case there's a few who don't know, it's a website that you can go to. And on the left-hand side, you can say, what's your current React Native version? And on the right-hand side, you can say, to which version would you like to upgrade? You can choose the two versions. So what is your current version? Where would you like to go? It just defaults to the latest, which is 72.4 right now. And when you do that, it actually reaches out to that same diff purge uh, tool that we talked about earlier. And it formats it in a beautiful way. And I've actually talked to React Native developers who don't know. It's hard to see on the screen, but don't know that there's a little check mark right there. That when you're done with the file, you can click that check mark and it goes away and it says, I'm done with this file. Well, how are you doing this? You usually have on one monitor or one side of your super wide monitor this up, right? And on the other side, you have your app. And so you look at it and you say, okay, what, what's the current, you know, like, git ignore. Okay, I'll go open the git ignore. And when you open the git ignore, then you look at these files, or you look at this diff, and you look at your file, and you try to orient yourself. Where are the, where, where's the line we need to update? You copy, you paste, and you make your modifications, and then you're looking this way, and you're looking that way, and you're looking this way, and you're looking that way, you're comparing the two, and when you're finally happy with the result, then you move on to the next file. But you kind of feel like this cat. You're kind of looking back and forth, back and forth. Get a crick in your neck. So there's gotta be, there's gotta be a better way than this, right? That's why I'm really excited to introduce Flame AI. It is a CLI for interactive AI-powered React Native upgrades. It's gonna be maybe more than that. But that's what it does right now. So what am I talking about when I, when I say AI-powered? Well, I'm gonna be showing you on stage what that looks like. When you run the tool, and you can do this right now, this is actually published to NPM, you can run it via NPX, NPX Flame Upgrade, React-Native, and there's this optional dash-dash interactive mode. And that's actually part of the power of this tool. I will show you both the initial just run it and see what happens, as well as the dash dash interactive where we're gonna be spending more of our time uh, today. You do need a GPT-4 API key from OpenAI. So just as a little re recap, what's GPT-4? You've heard of ChatGPT. ChatGPT, if you go to the free version, it uses 3.5. 3.5 is mostly useless. If you use four, it's mostly not useless, still has some problems, but it's getting there. And so how do you get a GPT-4 API key? Well, if you try to run this command, it will notice that you don't have it and it'll tell you what to do. So try not to run it on, on the Wi-Fi here. It's not gonna work. Uh, it is open source. I did open source it recently. And so you can go out and take a look at the the source, it's written in TypeScript, okay? So it is not, I'm not using Langcha Langchain, I'm not using uh, any of these other like popular Python tools. This is just straight up JavaScript, TypeScript, it's stuff that you all are familiar with. And part of my motivation for doing this is to show you all that this is possible. Some of you have probably played with the OpenAI uh, API. Maybe you've already done some stuff with it, which is really cool. A lot of developers, when they start looking into it, they start seeing a lot of Python code. They start seeing a lot of stuff about LangChain. They start seeing a lot of, you know, you need a vector database, you need embeddings, you need a fine tuning, all of these things, right? Not really. The amount of AI code that I have in this tool is relatively minimal. Most of my time was spent with the developer experience. So, Demo time. And <laughs> I, how about uh, you all give me some encouragement because this is gonna take a little bit, all right? <laughs> so I have it installed locally, so I'm not gonna be running it via NPX. Um, but let's, let's go ahead and on this left-hand side over here, you see that I have a terminal open in VS Code. On the right-hand side, I have Upgrade Helper, and let's make that a little smaller. All right, Flame Help, okay. 
First thing I want to point out is that ASCII art. <laughs> it's amazing what you can accomplish when you're trying to procrastinate preparing for a conference talk. <laughs> uh, so this runs in Node, and what this, uh, th so this is a CLI and it runs in Node. Um, the only command that I document so far, there are some other experimental commands, but I haven't gotten to the point where I want to, you know, have people trying them yet, uh, is the upgrade react native command that we saw earlier. So what, what are we in right now? Well, the, the project that we're in is a brand new react native app spun up using Ignite CLI. So there are some light modifications to the native files. Uh, for example, we installed, pre-installed for you Expo modules into the iOS folder so that you can just add Expo project or Expo libraries and use them right out of the box. Ignite is a very cool thing, and you should definitely check it out if you haven't checked it out before. But this talk isn't about Ignite. This is about React Native, and the, the default Ignite uh, uh, app that you spin up happens to be a, a good candidate for this. So what I want to do is show you the whole thing. So upgrade react-native. And I'm just going to do one little thing. I don't know if I have the internet right now. So it looks like I don't. So I'm going to say 2, 0.72.4. So that was the first thing I needed the internet for, was reaching out and finding out what is the by default, it will try to detect what is the latest version of React Native uh, on NPM. But in this case, I'm just going to tell it. Now, the other thing that it's doing, I have under the hood a cache. So because I knew that the, the Wi-Fi was going to be a little flaky here, before I did the talk, I actually ran all of the HTTP requests and cached them. So let's see if this works. Uh, before I run that, I want to just note some of the files that have changed in this, in this version. So we have package.json, we have the, uh, uh, looks like gitignore, we have, you know, a few other things. Uh, which, which is this one? This is the, this is the build.gradle, but there are two of them. This is the app build gradle. I think there's some others as well. But let's just run this, run this, file, run this uh, command and see what happens. And while it's running, and crossing my fingers, yeah, it looks like it's working. So I'm going to explain a little bit what's happening here. So it also reaches out to React Native diff purge. It grabs that git, that git diff. It splits it into different files that, uh, that, that, that are represented in that git diff. And then it goes to those files in your file system. Because again, this is a CLI, no AI yet. We're just grabbing stuff, right? We grab the file. At the top, we put a custom prompt that I've written, basically like, you're helping me, an, a React Native up, uh, developer, upgrade a React Native app from version to version. Here is the diff for this file. Here are the current contents of that file. The current contents of that file are not a vanilla, right out of React Native CLI uh, representation. They're what's actually in your file. So because of that, it can then take the diff, the git diff, and apply it to your file because GPT-4 understands git diffs, believe it or not. It knows minus line plus line means delete this line, add this line, modification, right? It's really good at this. And so what I've done is made these changes. Let's go and take a look at what happened on the git side. Look at this. All of these files have been modified. So it then sends it to GPT-4. GPT-4 then sends back a, a set of custom instructions using a, a feature called function calling. And then I then, on my CLI, go and make the changes to the file. So you've probably on, on chat GPT, pasted in some code and had it return back the whole code, right? Like, here's some code, modify it to do this, give me everything, and it does that. But that uses up a lot of tokens because, you know, most of the file didn't change. So why are you, ju you just like outputting a bunch of, of text and token size is a big limitation of, of uh, AI LLMs, right, uh, l large language models today. So instead of doing that, I just say, give me the instructions to update this file. So let's, let's, uh, let's pick a file 
to go take a look at. I'm going to say um, maybe just the package JSON. That's going to be a simple one. So package JSON looks like we've updated from 71.7 to 72.4. I probably don't need to go, whoops, package.json. There it is. And yeah, it did, made that change right up there. And there's some other changes as well that don't exist. You can see right here, these don't exist in the Ignite CLI because we have, we have a custom setup. So it's, made, it's applied those changes to your package JSON. Very cool. But just running it through, you're going to still have to go through and, and do a bunch of checks. And probably if it screwed up, you're going to have to manually fix that, right? And it will screw up. It's like 90% accurate, but it will screw up, especially the more you've customized your native files. So let's do something. Let's reset back to where it was. So get, you, get is your friend here. And let's run it in inter interactive mode here. OK. So. Interactive mode is, I think, the workflow that I'm looking for when I'm updating a React Native app. First off, it's telling me just for one file, just for one file that is in my project, the diff, I don't know if those of you in the back, maybe you can see this at the very bottom there. There's, it actually brings in the diff, the git diff, from the React Native diff uh, purge uh, download that it did and shows it to you. But this is just what's in diff purge. This is not what's in your project. So I have a little menu here. And that menu just says, do you want to upgrade this file? You can skip it, you can exit, or you can start upgrading. By the way, if you're watching this later on YouTube, this can change. It's possible that this will change, hopefully for the better. Uh, but for now, that's what we do. So um, I can just say, start upgrading. It will then send that out to OpenAI. Get it back, and now what it's showing you is the actual diff of your, your actual file, like what it actually applied to your file. Now, there's, there's some, if, if you have a keen eye, you might notice that, hey, it just added this line right here. Like, I, I don't really want that. that. That wasn't in the diff, right? Well, there are reasons for that. Um, I'm working on ways to make this more accurate. But what you can do is either just delete it manually, easy enough, go into your file editor and, and make that change, but you know, move on, which is what I'm just going to do right now. I'm just going to move on. But there is an, another option right here, which if I had internet, I would show you. So it goes to the next file. This one's a much bigger file. This is a build.gradle, app build.gradle. And you'll see that it removes the, the, uh, the output file here. So I'm going to, just so we can kind of see this in action, bring it up here build.gradle, and it needs to be the app one. And I'm going to go to the top. And you can see that there's this output file line right here. So if I start upgrading, it sends out to OpenAI, and that, that line goes away. It also has made some other changes. So if I go look at the diff, I can either look at it here, but this is a little more awkward, or I can go to VS Code and just kind of scroll through the changes. Little changes like this. So uh, it noticed that this node module's path was not correct, and it made the, the changes for you. Now, some of you might be thinking, OK, this, yeah, all right, it's doing this for me. That's, that's really cool. But I could do this myself, right? And that's true. You could do it yourself. But as I was working on this and doing the workflow, even without the AI component, just the fact that it brought up the diff for me, found the file for me, and even just makes a change in that file so it shows up here and I don't even have to go hunt for it and be in the wrong build.gradle, which I'm sure you've done that before. Uh, that even that workflow is already an improvement. So let's keep going. Uh, let's go next file. And this one is kind of interesting. So this is the main activity. I want to actually show you, I keep doing that, main activity.java. I'm going to scroll this over just a little bit. Whoa, where'd we go? OK, right here. And I'm going to bring it up here as well. So I want to see how quick 
you all are at noticing a difference here between this, what we have set up here, like, like this part right here, and what you see over there. It's a very minor difference, but does anybody notice a difference that would cause the git apply to fail? This is a hard one. I'll give you a hint, it's a parenthesis. <laughs> right here, we've got one right here, and we actually have two on line 39 right there. Why do you think that is? Does anybody actually know? You might have actually done this. Tibo. Yes, Expo, exactly, Expo modules. So we actually wrap this in React Activity Delegate Wrapper, which is an Expo modules, uh, you know, uh, wrapper. And the, the, the boiler, like the React Native CLI doesn't ship with Expo modules built in. So because of that, it would actually fail, like if you tried to run it. The other thing that you'll notice is happening here is when this is all deleted, this parenthesis ends up over here. Instead of being on its own line like that, and this diff, it, for whatever reason, ends up on the same line. So let's try upgrading, and let's see what happens. Uh, oh, I put it in the wrong spot. Hit enter down here, yes, live demos. Okay, so it deleted those lines like it was supposed to, and on the very end here, those two parentheses ended up. It kept the two parentheses. It didn't delete, it didn't move it, make it one, like it showed on the diff. It also didn't fail. So this is the power of using an LLM to do this because it can actually then look at what's happening and infer what changes need to happen to your file, to your customized file, rather than a strict look for this, you know, and replace it. So this is what's really cool about using AI power to do code mods, code modifications. Uh, looks good, next file please. Um, I'm really curious if I can get internet because I really wanna show you something. It's really cool, but I need internet for it. And I know that React Native EU, the Wi-Fi has been hacked. <laughs> Thanks, Barry. All right. Uh, Moving on to the next one, uh, this one I'm going to skip because it's literally just the same. Yeah, go ahead. It's not showing up. If you do that, it'll... All right, while he's working on that, um, I'm just going to mention that this diff right here, for whatever reason, it was just like a space that was, that was removed. You can apply that if you want to. I also want to talk a little bit about costs because GPT-4 costs money. Uh, and what I found is that for a normal sized uh, code file, what's normal size to you? Try it now, okay. What's normal size file to you? How many lines of code? A thousand, yes. <laughs> Must be a React Native developer. Uh, let's say 150, a little optimistic. That's probably about 12 to 15 cents. So not like nothing, like if you were running this in your, your like real app with real users, that would add up really fast, right? But for what a developer costs, wow, has anybody ever like calculated how much money is just being used in this room? That'd be crazy. I, I'm, an, I'm an employer, I think that way. Uh, 13 cents is just not a big deal when you're talking about a developer, if it helps them. It has to help them. If it doesn't help them, then, you know, not, not good. Okay, we'll upgrade this one. And that seems to have done the job. Let's move on to the next one. I would normally be looking at the upgrade helper, but I'm not gonna do that right now. Uh, continuing to make these changes, it updated that version, or that uh, flipper version right there. Next file, uh, update. Gradle version, it also adds this network timeout thing. Again, it's this workflow that we're talking about. You can see what it did right there. You can see what it was, you can like look at it, and then you can see what it did. Go next. I'm not gonna update the Gradle W or the Gradle W.bat. Uh, this one's interesting. So, this is where I wanted internet. And, yeah. So, the only real change is 
that this path of this no node module has changed to at react-native slash gradle-plugin. But it used to be react-native-gradle-plugin. And the thing is, though, in Ignite, we have, again, made some modifications to this file. So this is the settings.gradle. Let's go take a look. What is, the, what is the big difference here? Well, we have this new file, node-print. This is in order to support, hopefully, things like PNPM, symlinks, maybe some sort of uh, uh, monorepo, that sort of thing. So when we run this, it's supposed to like, change this build to that, and that's what it did. It made that change, but it didn't match the style we had before. So this is where the interactive mode becomes more, uh, more powerful. Hoping that our internet works, I go down and I say, try again and ask me for advice. That's an option now. So it's asking me, well, any advice to help me convert this file better? Okay. Uh, keep the new file, parenthesis, dot, 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 syntax, and just change the Gradle plugin path. I'm really hoping this works. Because this is actually making a real request now over the internet. I didn't want to cache that. I wanted that to be a real-time thing. So let me know if that goes. I won't see it. <laughs> um, the idea is that you can chat with, the, uh, with, with basically chat GPT. Ah. OK, un unknown error. OK, internet problem. <laughs> I'll make that a little bit nicer, too. It just skipped it. So the idea is that, essentially, you'll, you'll, you'll be in a situation where uh, it didn't quite do the right thing, but you can provide it a prompt. And it'll then undo what it did. It undoes it with an internal, uh, it, it keeps the previous uh, uh, file state in memory, so it's not relying on Git or anything like that. I wouldn't recommend you run this tool with a Git, like a dirty Git working tree, but you can. Like, it will undo what it did. Uh, and then it will try it again, but it'll send your custom prompt. You can then do it again. If it didn't get it right, you can put it, you know, you can say, uh, give me more ideas, and it will add the previous one and your new one. And where that comes in really handy, and I'm going to just skip to the end of this, I'm just going to go down to exit, is this right here, custom prompts. It will actually add all of your custom prompts into its report at the end, because it tells you, like, like, what did it change, what did it modify, what did it delete, what did it create? And at the bottom here, it actually gives you the custom prompts. You can then copy that and paste that and send that, you know, you can tweet it, you can put it on, on your Slack, you can put it in your knowledge base. Maybe eventually we could actually ship custom prompts per React Native release so that our tool is smarter. It, it knows specifically, hey, you know, for an Ignite app, for example, uh, I could put in there like, uh, for an Ignite app, just always make sure we include this thing about the file. Like, it's, you know, just make sure you do that, right? And the LLM will then uh, pay attention to that. So, uh, all right. That is the end of the demo. All right, so. What's next for, for Flame? So obviously, we need to test it on some real world apps. Uh, I need you all to actually try this out. So go out there, get a GPT-4 key, get it set up. I do have some plans to maybe support Claude. You can see that in, down here. Code Llama is another one. That one potentially could run locally. Um, I need to gather feedback, file issues, other issues. You know, I would also like help. I mean, it's just TypeScript, right? So you can help. You can go in there and figure out what's going on and help. And support for monorepos. Right now, if, if, uh, if you run this in uh, kind of a non-standard setup, maybe your, your, your iOS folder is in a different place or something like that, it just won't find it. And so eventually, I'd like to get to the point where it can reach out and find stuff or ask you, again, this is a conversation between you and the tool, where that is. And integration with tools like our next kit align depths, which you heard earlier with the Microsoft folks, um, there are lots of tools in our tool belt that help us do upgrades. Long term, 
The core team is, is talking about making upgrades even easier, especially as we approach API stability. So this tool, hopefully, at some point, will be less necessary. But Flame will be a platform where maybe we could do things like, for example, new version of React Navigation comes out, and they change the API. You could actually run a Flame upgrade React Navigation, and it would go out and find all of the navigation files in your, in your project and make the changes based on some sort of a recipe that we ship with it. So it knows how to convert this to that. It's a code mod tool, and it uses AI. Uh, big thanks to all these people who helped me with this presentation with Flame and, and everything, uh, as well as, I am, I am Jamin Holmgren. Thank you all very much. Check out our, our website, infinite.red. Appreciate it. <laughs>